Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another video tutorial in the JavaScript for beginners especially the jQuery UI part. So we've started off with understanding what is jQuery UI and in the previous video tutorial we took a little bit of theoretical understanding of what jQuery UI is and how it is different from the normal jQuery core library. So basically jQuery UI is another library which is built on top of jQuery and if you have missed that video do check that out because in this video we are going to be starting off with the practical aspect of jQuery UI especially the widgets and we are going to be taking a look at the date time picker widget okay so if you have watched that previous video this is something that we've achieved in the previous video so what we did is we downloaded the jquery ui files that is the library files which consisted of three important css files so these are the three important css files so this css slash style dot css is something that is created by us which is inside the css folder and then these three things that is the jquery ui dot css jQuery UI.structure.css and jQuery UI.theme.css are the three files which are of the jQuery UI library. And then we also need a JavaScript file which is this one, jQuery UI.js. Okay. So it's inside the jQuery UI folder. And I had mentioned that it has to be always below the core jQuery library file. Okay. So if this is the first line, that is the core library should be the first line and this has to be below it because jQuery UI is built on top of jQuery core library. So let me just show you the folder hierarchy as well. So in the code folder, which is open over here in the Visual Studio code, this is how things look like. We have jQuery UI folder inside which we have the jQuery UI CSS and JavaScript and whatnot. We have our own CSS folder inside which we have created our custom style.css, which is basically blank right now. So if you go over here in the Visual Studio code right now, you can see style.css. If you click on it, currently it's blank. We haven't added any styling as of now but we've just kept it created and we have a JavaScript folder inside which we have jQuery core library. Okay, so let's start off with the date time picker, which is basically a widget. So a widget is essentially a component which is predefined and what it helps us achieve is it helps us achieve a lot of functionality, which if we actually create it from scratch will take a lot of code, especially JavaScript code. But since it is already predefined in jQuery UI, it is just one line of code which completely creates the entire user interface of date time picker. So let me just show you on the screen how date time picker looks like. And as you can see on the screen, I'll put it somewhere on the screen. You can see that it is basically a calendar tool, which if you actually try to design from scratch in HTML JavaScript, it will take a lot of line of code. But let's see how jQuery UI helps us achieve this in just single line of code. Okay. So I'm just going to click on this so that we have more room over here. So at the bottom, let's open one more script tag and inside this, we will write the jQuery code. So what I've done is I've given this division an ID of my div. So I'm just going to use the jQuery selectors to select that division. So I'm going to say dollar inside. I'm going to say hash my div and I'm going to say dot and there's an inbuilt method that I'm going to call. I'm going to say date picker opening and closing round brackets and semicolon. And immediately, as you can see on the right hand side, we have a complete calendar, which is directly rendered onto the screen. So what exactly happened over here is since we have included the jQuery UI library, it has inbuilt methods. For example, currently we are looking at the date picker method. So when you call this method, the complete date picker is created inside this selected division. Okay. So right now we selected this division. We gave it an ID and that's why we got this date picker, which is completely created in the backend in the jQuery UI library itself. So you can go through the methods, but I'm pretty sure as a beginner, you won't really understand. But the core purpose of this UI library is to actually use the inbuilt methods instead of getting into details, how exactly is the calendar rendered. So you can see this one single line of code. We got a complete calendar with the current date selected. It's January 2nd. And then you can go next, go back and do a couple of things, which we will see as we move ahead. So let's see some different variations that what we can do with this date time picker and date picker control. Now, of course, in real world scenarios, if you're working on some project, a lot of times you have to have a date time picker, a date picker, a calendar control. And in that case, if you actually go ahead and start coding everything from scratch, you'll take a lot of time. So this jQuery UI helps us do that in one single line of code, as you can see, and it is pretty much used a lot in practical scenarios. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an input tag. So I'm going to say input and I'm going to give it an ID. I'm going to say my input or I'm going to say date input. Okay. So what we'll do is right now you can see in the selector, what I did is I selected the division. So that's why this date picker was created inside this division. 
So what we can do is another variation we can do is instead of selecting the division, we can select this input tag. If I just copy the ID and paste it over here, you can see right now you cannot see the calendar, but it is actually present. So if I click on this text box, you can see the calendar opens up. If I click outside, it fades out. So this is amazing, right? So if I give a placeholder over here, click to select date. Okay. So if I click on it, you can see the entire calendar is created. And the best part is if I select a particular date, let's say I'll select tomorrow's date, which is 3rd January. If I click on it, immediately that date is also coming over here. So the first one is month. Then we have date that is day and then year. So that's how the pattern is MMDD and four times Y. Now, if I click on it, you can see which date is selected currently. If I select something else, the date is changed. So this is all by just one line of code. I'm not even doing anything. And there are still many more variations that we can do with this date time picker or date picker actually. So what are the different things that we can do? Because obviously we need some kind of customizations also. For example, when I click on this, what if I want to see two or three months side by side? That is, I want to see multiple months in this entire big calendar. Okay. So in that case, what you have to do is we have to pass certain predefined parameters in this method. Okay. So we have to pass arguments and the arguments are passed in the form of key value pair. So remember when you go ahead in the style sheet, when you create a style, let's say I'm creating a style for this division, my div. And if I say border colon two pixel solid and give it a color, you can see I'm getting a border. I can also add a padding 10 pixel. Okay. So now you can see that when I'm giving CSS styling, we have to give the style name colon and whatever value it is, right? Similarly in this date picker, if you want to add certain predefined customizations, which are already provided, but you can toggle them on or off or change them depending on different options. What you have to do is we have to pass them as key value pairs in curly braces. So similar to the way we are passing things in curly braces, we have to create curly braces over here. So we have to give the parameter name and we have to give the parameter value. So there are many predefined parameters. I'll drop a link in the video description. If you want to check them all out, let's see and go through a few of them. So let's say, as I mentioned, if you want to click on this, and you want to see more months side by side. Okay. So what you can do is coming back to the code in the curly braces, I'm going to hit enter over here because I'm going to add multiple things. The parameter name is number of months. Now this is case sensitive. So the first letter is small. Then we have O as capital and M as capital. So all of them are combined, but every new word starts with a capital letter, except the first one you have to give colon. And you have to add how many number of months you want to see. So if I say two, and if I come over here and click on it, you can see two months are added. So January and February is added. So let me just actually increase the size of the browser and you'll probably see it well. So you can see two of them are added. So coming to the code, if I give three and if I click on this, you can see January, February, March was also added. So this is something that you can do. I'm going to give one over here and I'm going to reduce this. So let's stick to one. So let's see what all things can we do more. So let's say what you want to do is you want to change your month and year and have a drop down over here to change the month and year. Okay. So instead of scrolling ahead and clicking back back, you cannot go a lot of times before, right? Like let's say you want to go two years back. Are you going to click this like 24 times to go two years back? No, right? You just want to drop down over here and directly select the year, right? So what you can do is you can add that option also. So just hit comma over here. If you want to add multiple parameters, hit enter and the option name is or parameter name is change year colon and this takes a boolean value that is true or false. So I'm going to say true. Now if I click on the text box, you can see I'm getting a drop down to change the complete year. So I can change anything over here. I can directly go a few years back or few years ahead in time from the current date using this drop down. It becomes very easy. Okay. Now that similar thing can be done for this months also. So add a comma along with change year, you can have change month. And by the way, as I mentioned, this is case sensitive. So small caps won't work. You have to do it as it is. So now if I click over here, you can see I'm getting a drop down to change the month also. So instead of going ahead using these arrow keys, I can directly use these drop downs. So one more thing what you can do is you can add the week number, which you are currently into. So the parameter for that is show week colon again, Boolean value true or false right now by default it is false. So if I click on this, you can see 
we are in the last week and then this next week starts that is the first week starts from the next week actually so one two and three and week number and you can see the initial value of wk which stands for week now you can change this wk by saying week header colon now this is a text value so you have to pass a string i can say weeks or i can say wk number if i click on this you can see it is coming wk number or wk no now sometimes what happens is if you've seen a particular calendar control when you are in a particular month now currently we are in january right you also can see dates of the previous months right so you can see these two spaces are blank over here and these two spaces are blank over here because those have dates of the previous month and these two blocks are for the next month but sometimes in calendar controls you can see that these are visible but they are not highlighted they are kind of like disabled or faded so you can do that kind of feature also by making another parameter true and that is show other months colon again a boolean value true now if i click on this you can see 30 and 31 but they are very faded out because they are values or dates from the previous month and you can see one and two which are values from february and we are currently in january so the last two customizations that i want to talk in this video are min date and max date which comes in as a part of validation and it is kind of important so obviously you cannot or you don't want to travel all the way back right sometimes you have a validation point that you can only go one year back and one year ahead or you have you can go like 30 days back 30 days ahead right you cannot book a travel ticket after a particular period of time right so if you are traveling from one place to another and you're booking a plane ticket there is a limit to which you can book dates for right you cannot go ahead and say i want to book a ticket for 10 years from now right obviously that's not valid so that comes under validations and that can be done using the min date and max date property so let me just show you how it works and then i'll explain to you so this is min date property and here it takes a date object so date is a predefined object in javascript we've not really talked about that in this video tutorial series i suppose but i'll drop a link in the video description we've talked about objects so i'm pretty sure you'll easily understand it so the way we create an object is by using the new keyword and then what we are passing is we are passing the year number we are passing the month number and a lot of times numbers in programming start from zero right so this zero is basically january so 11 would be december so don't make a mistake over here and then this is the actual date of the day okay so year so y y y y mm and dd okay so what i have set over here is i'm saying you cannot go beyond 2017 more backwards okay so you cannot go into 2016 and the max date is how long or how much in future can you go so i have set 2020 zero stands for january and january first okay so i can change this to phi also let's change this to some other number to validate it properly now if i click on this i can go to 2018 i can go to 2017 but you can see i cannot go beyond that if i go to 2017 you can see i can select phi but i cannot select 4 3 2 1 because we have selected that the minimum date has to be 5 january 2017 right so i cannot go more behind that date similarly i can go to 2020 but i can only select from 1 2 3 4 5 i cannot go beyond that ahead in time because we've set 5 january 2020 as the max date okay so yeah these were some different customizations available with date time picker and as you can see this one small line of code that is only this much line of code gives you so much functionality and if you didn't have jquery ui you would have to actually design entire thing with all those images with all so many customizations with the drop downs and whatnot you know and as a beginner obviously this is not possible for us but since jquery ui is open source free to use a lot of developers directly use it because they want to reduce their development and programming time and you can see there is a lot of customization so a lot of things can be done in jquery ui so this is one of the practical applications that is the widgets in jquery ui and we'll see a few more of them different types of widgets which you can actually use in your projects so yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was. Do share it with your friends and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.